from LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Trullo. And I'm Keith Farmer. We have a good show coming up. We'll preview tonight's UK volleyball match. It's Kentucky versus Purdue in the Elite Eight. That's right, and it's a wrap for UK's football spring session. We'll break it all down and bring in the voice of the Wildcats, Tom Leach. But let's start with this. The road to a championship continues for Kentucky volleyball tonight. That's tonight's big blue story presented by Baptist Health. The Cats are back in action tonight after they swept WKU just a few hours yes, ago, yeah. really. And tonight the Cats take on Purdue. That match is set to start 45 minutes after the end of the Florida-Wisconsin game. Game. That's going on right now, and you can watch UK against Purdue on ESPNU. Keith, that's a quick and tough turnaround for the number two seed in the tournament. I hope Coach Skinner let them sleep in a little bit today, especially after they put in the work last night. They handed the Hilltoppers their first loss on the year. Kentucky is now in the Elite Eight for the second time in school history. I just don't understand how you're in a convention I center know. full of courts. Why can you not? rotate two courts. Right? Instead, you had Kentucky playing last night starting at almost midnight. Yeah. I mean, just ridiculous. And they got to mm -hmm. wheel back around and play again tonight. So uh, not good, but they certainly look terrific. And uh, hopefully they can keep that up against Purdue. All right, so let's go back to last night. It was a late one for the team. The original start time against Western, 10 p.m. But the clock had nearly struck midnight <laughs> before the match got underway in the Omaha bubble. That didn't stop the Cats from putting on an impressive display with a dominating three nothing sweep of the Hilltoppers. I don't know. I don't know if it's on record. It's got to be the latest uh, NCAA match of all time in history uh, that being played. So, um, you know, there's just you, we tried to stay back at the hotel as long as possible because we knew it was backed up. And then we get there and we do kind of our routine and then, you know, we're sitting probably for 45 minutes waiting to kind of see how many sets the next, you know, previous match is going to go. So a lot of things go through my mind at that point in time, but, you know, just the upperclassmen continue to be, you know, professional about how they handle themselves and setting a great example for the younger players. Anna Madison Lilly said it last week. She feels like they're the best team in the country at kind of rolling with the punches and, yep. and going with what's out there and, and not getting affected by this, and they proved that. And that's what you need to keep it going in the postseason. Yeah. Allie Stumler, she had a match high 17 kills against the Hilltoppers. Here's what she had to say about advancing to the Elite Eight. It's awesome, and it's so rewarding, especially after a year like this. I'm sure you guys can attest. It's been a crazy year, and... Um, it's so cool just to see hard work pay off. You know, we've been working for over a year, whether that was in quarantine, working out at home, or that was in the gym where we only had five people, maybe because some people were quarantined or we couldn't get all 15 in the gym. So it was just really crazy year. So it's awesome and rewarding just to see everything pay off. Now, let's not forget volleyball is a fall sport, so their first match of this season was technically on October 16th, but I'm really liking what I'm hearing out of Coach Skinner and his team. They're mature, professional, ready to get to work, and it doesn't seem like they're wasting much energy worrying about outside circumstances, so that's the right mentality you want to have. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if you noticed it, but this is the 2020 tournament right. that's being played in 2021. So, so weird. Because, yes, it was supposed to end in the fall. All right, turning to football and Kentucky's 2021 spring session is over. The team held one final scrimmage on Saturday instead of the traditional spring game. The month of practices and scrimmages gave the staff a chance to install Liam Cohen's offense and get the defense rolling again after replacing a number of starters from last season. Head coach Mark Stoop says he was satisfied with what he saw this spring, but the work needs to keep progressing as summer approaches. They've got to come back and have a really strong summer. We've got to have great leadership. They've got to do a lot of work on their own um, to continue to uh, evolve, um, in particular offensively, because it, because it's new. So we've got a lot to do, um, but but I like the pieces we have in place, Larry, and uh, I think we've got it. We've got a chance. We've got to just continue to work really hard. Anna, this summer is going to be huge for the development of some of these younger guys that need to step up, especially at the quarterback position. For sure, and we've talked throughout the spring session about how guys like Josh Paschal and DeAndre Square are helping out, are stepping up and helping out these younger guys. Yeah. That's what's hard about quarterback because not only are you installing a new offense, but you're going to have a new starter. So that's a big learning mm -hmm. curve they're going to have to go through this yeah. summer. But speaking of quarterbacks, they need some guys to throw the ball to. The wide receiver position is one that outside of Josh Ali and Wondell Robinson, we haven't 
seen much production out of anyone else, but senior safety Yusuf Corker told us Saturday that the rest of the guys are stepping up. From the wide receiver perspective, I felt like Cleveland was giving us a lot of work, especially when, uh, with me in the slot. Also, Josh Ali with his quickness and explosiveness, and also Isaiah Epps with his route running ability. And also Isaiah Cummins being a big body guy. I mean, we got all the receivers really been working at that position and trying to, you know, step up. And when they come in, try to make plays. Keith Clevan Thomas is a name we've heard over and over again this spring that he's been there putting the work in. Would love to see him take a big step forward in his senior season. Yeah, and he has shown flashes of brilliance, so I'd love to see him put it all together. And I think we're going to see a lot more of these receivers that you all heard Yousef talking about as well show up in the fall. But it wasn't all good news over the weekend. Uh, Coach Stoops also announced that Derek Jackson suffered a lower body injury that is likely season ending. Jackson was one of the favorites to replace Jamin Davis at middle linebacker so inside backer getting pretty thin with just a couple of guys there right now including Luke Fulton and Jared Casey but highly touted for incoming freshman Trevin Wallace uh, could be forced into some early playing time as well Anna that's right so hopefully he gets to campus soon can start getting some reps in and yeah. learning from the team we'll talk about more about the impact of that Jackson injury news with Tom Leach in just a few minutes yeah but first it's an exclusive interview with UK's wide receivers coach we're talking about Javon Bow Knight that's next. Stay with us. <laughs> 